Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of the day is good as it can possibly be. As for me, I'm gonna start my day trying to breed the chameleons again. You guys may remember a few days ago we had them together and some people reached out to me with some advice on them too. You know, I'm learning uh, right along with you guys, right? So everything's a little bit different. We learned the other day that with lychee geckos you wanna put the female in with the male because the female can be territorial and can be the problem. With most snakes, I usually put males in with females. Well, it turns out that a bunch of people said that I should actually put the male like Raul here in with the female because it's typically a better thing to actually move the male into the female's cage so that's what we're gonna try to do and basically what you want to do is like just introduce these guys together just like this and then see how they're gonna react all right so I'm gonna just see what they do kind of see where they're at it seems like oh nope 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 and I just have to keep an eye on these guys for a minute it looks like right now she kind of ran away which is not a good receptive thing so I'm gonna keep an eye on it he seems to be a little bit perturbed as well the female went to hide right now. I guess theoretically when they're receptive, the female's gonna kind of wag her tail a little bit, maybe brighten up her color. So I'm not sure if she's ready yet. I'll keep an eye on these two guys for maybe the next five minutes, keep them together. And if they don't kind of settle down, I'll remove them and I'll just keep on trying. And eventually she's gonna start to ovulate again. And when she starts to ovulate again, she's gonna be receptive to breeding. So it would be really cool to produce some baby chameleons. It's something that I guess I've, I've been excited about for a long time. So uh, regardless, we'll just keep an eye on these guys and hope for the best if it doesn't work out we'll just separate them out and try again in a couple days well, i'll give you guys a little update on heinz here the crimson albino aquana and again he's just a little bit wiggly in the beginning you got to just kind of walk him around but he's doing really really well i had mentioned before that he lost his tail and oftentimes when iguanas lose a tail the biggest thing that you want to worry about is them stop feeding and stressing out and as you can see he's super fat and super chunky and i'm just kind of letting him roll through and eventually he's calming down and he'll just sit on my hand like that you can even see a little tip of his tail starting to grow out just a little bit again hopefully his tail will grow back it'll probably be a little bit darker but these guys are doing so well I'm just happy that even with him losing his tail that he is just a chunky little monkey it's crazy how much food these four iguanas eat I mean we fill up their food every single day and almost all of it's gone so he's doing really well uh, French is by the way his female albino is doing good as well as the two reds too so these guys are absolutely wonderful and uh, I can't wait till they start to get bigger and again you can see even though he's a little crazy when you first take him out he certainly is calming down tremendously still on ivy watch still no shed she's totally cleared up from blue now so i know she's going to shed probably today tomorrow by the absolute latest and and like i said keep commenting down below if you think she's going to shed in the water and just use the rocks in the back there to go or is she going to climb up on land and, and use the land i don't know but uh She's finally definitely 100% out of blue now and in that clear stage. Uh, definitely within the next 24 hours, we're gonna find out what this girl is gonna do. Just going through and marking a bunch of animals. Lori has been bugging me because there's a bunch of snakes down here that we just haven't had marked for what the genetics are because it sometimes isn't that easy, right? This was actually a pastel lesser clown female bred to a pastel leopard clown male. So I'm just gonna mark these because Lori wants to put a bunch of stuff on the website. Not sure if all these are gonna get on the website because this is actually a pastel lesser leopard clown ball python. Just a beautiful animal, it's a female. So I might keep it, I'm not 100% sure, but a lot of the things I'm gonna go through and mark today We'll get on the website uh, again we probably have you know maybe a hundred ball pythons that aren't on the website yet that'll go up here in the next couple days so uh, it's just that things are selling pretty good and so we need to get more stuff up on the website which is completely understandable and you know sometimes when you're actually looking at mutations obviously it's important to know what the male and the female is but it can be a little bit subjective like it's a little bit difficult this is actually a killer leopard clown ball python so it's a super pastel because there's pastel on both sides of the animal and of course it's leopard and clown clown ball python. The fact that it's recessive, when you start to know the genetics, like recessive means everything has to be clown, then you start looking at does it have one or two expressions of pastel, does the leopard gene, which is incomplete dominant, does that kind of bleed through? So these are all things that you kind of kind of have to learn just through experience. It's not super easy and there are some times where an animal is like it might be this but it might not be. So we always sell the animals with the lowest possible expression and then we'll tell people like there's a possibility it could be a yellow belly or it could be a vanilla or whatever the case might be and that's actually a male which is a powerhouse male too by the way uh, that's that's awesome that's a killer leopard clown that's that's a powerhouse animal to use for sure now this one is actually just a really beautiful leopard lesser clown it's unbelievable how amazing that animal is right there that is beautiful and then take a look at this one right here oh my gosh that thing is ridiculous that again that leopard pattern with the clown 
and the lesser combined, whew, I tell you what, that makes for a beautiful snake. You guys might remember a couple days ago, I asked you about this enclosure here and said I really didn't have a vision for what I can put in here. And asked you guys, you guys had a lot of great ideas to be totally honest with you. But the one thing that really did stand out to me, again, you have to have a little bit of vision for this because I'd probably have to put some more branches and climbing trees in here and then tons of foliage is maybe some green basilisk. Now, I used to keep green basilisk when I was like 20 years old and actually even bred them, believe it or not. Now they're relatively common because they're invasive to Florida and they're all over South Florida, to be honest with you. So where they used to be extremely rare, now people are actually catching babies out in the wild. It's really kind of bizarre, but they're really a beautiful lizard. And I thought maybe being able to put a male and a couple females in here, again, really heavily foliaged out, some more climbing, might be pretty cool. So let me know in the comments if you guys think that that's a good idea. I can definitely see this being a pretty cool option for them, but uh, still not 100% sold, but uh, it is a really good idea, I think. Olivia, what are you doing? Uh, just hanging out, enjoying my uh, social distancing. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, at least the fish are getting fed. Uh, all right, see, that's what that's what happens. I walk away for one second and they, they're doing fish spots. What, do you, what can you do? This is actually a pin specter that was bred to a fire yellow belly. Now, the specter and yellow belly would make super stripes, but this is obviously a fire pin. But the fact is, is, is it a specter or is it a yellow belly? Because both have kind of similar traits. But in this case, you can really see there's no flaming in the sides at all. That would be yellow belly. So we know that this is actually a fire pinstripe specter, not a fire pinstripe yellow belly. So it's just little things like that, that kind of little cues that you have to become really familiar with. Beautiful animal and really a beautiful genetic animal as well. But uh, if you were to add yellow belly into this, then you would get a fire pin super stripe, which would be ridiculous. Oh, and speaking of which, this is actually the animal I was just talking about. This is actually a fire pinstripe super stripe. I actually didn't even, I don't even remember hatching this, to be honest with you. That thing is ridiculous. Oh my, that thing is Beautiful. So, uh, yep, fire pin super strike. And just to kind of round that out, I actually found a fire pin yellow belly. This is the fire pin specter, and this is the yellow belly. Again, see all the flaming in the sides here compared to this one here? That's how you tell the difference between a yellow belly and a specter. Elvis is definitely uh, loving the pond now. He kind of figured it out. Remember the other vlog when he was like not sure about it, he climbed up? Well, now he's loving it. He climbs up here, he jumps in the water, he swims around, he comes out, he crawls around again, and he's just kind of repeating. So, and again, it's really not hurting anything for him to go in there. There, but he is absolutely loving it. And again, this is a huge mental enrichment thing for him. So I think it's super cool. He seems to be super happy with it. So, uh, and I'm just enjoying watching how awesome this is. discussion with Lori because you know the gift shop when we were open for the one weekend was so wildly successful obviously with all these plushies cool things I mean all kinds of stuff like that and you guys know that at the reptarium.com we do have some things like keychains and posters and and merch and stuff like that but we don't have any of this type of stuff on there and I talked with Lori about like what do you think about putting all of this merch, everything in the gift shop up online? Uh, she wasn't a big fan of the idea, to be totally honest with you, but I wanna know from you guys, do you think it would be cool to just kind of upload all of this onto our website? Uh, is it something you're interested in? I don't know, I'm just thinking of things to do while we're not open, you know what I mean? So let me know what you think down below. And if you guys think we'll do it, maybe uh, that's a project I can work on over the next week or two. A lot of people have been asking what happened to Santana, the Savannah Monitor, and uh, I guess I just haven't showed him in a while. Now we got actually two babies in a while ago, but we only kept him. He was actually the azanthic one and uh, was really beautiful. Now that he's getting older, and of course he's in shed right now, he's just coming out of shed so he looks kind of dull. It's not as apparent that it's azanthic, right? As baby it was like silver, and azanthic just means it's lacking the yellow pigment. So it was more like newsprint looking than a normal Savannah monitor that's more tan looking. Uh, but it, you know, genetically it might be something interesting. I don't know that we'll ever breed these guys, but he's still pretty cool. And you can see he's getting big, super, super tame, really cool 
cool animals. I've mentioned it before that savanna monitors are a, a bigger lizard, but not as big as say a water monitor. But it's a good monitor choice if you're thinking about getting something that's sizable, like the size of a tegu, let's say, but you don't want something as big uh, because these guys are super chill typically. Really, I mean, look, if he just sits here like that, they're pretty lazy, they don't do a whole lot, and they're really uh, hardy animals. The thing that you've gotta be really careful with these guys, and a lot of people make mistakes, is feeding them too much meat. You should feed them a lot of bugs. So he eats tons of roaches, superworms, stuff like that. You don't want these guys to have too heavy of a diet of meat and rodents because they get fatty liver disease because these guys will eat themselves to death. So other than that, amazing animals. This was actually bred by a pewter bee female and then a dragonfly. The dragonfly is actually a pastel fire pinstripe and then the pewter bee would actually be a pastel, a cinnamon, and a spider. Believe it or not, this has all of those things going on. So it's a super pastel, it's a cinnamon, which would make it a sterling. It's also a fire, it's a spider, and it's a pinstripe. So it's all the genes mixed into one animal. That's 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 pretty impressive. There's a lot of different ways to get white snakes and ball pythons, which is really weird. So this was actually a lesser bred to a pastel crystal. So basically when you have the special in the lesser gene, it kind of makes a blue-eyed leucistic. It's another complex of that, but different from all the other ones. And ultimately, usually they have quite a bit of pattern on them, but they're a white snake with kind of yellow patterning. You take the pastel into it and it turns into basically almost a solid white snake. And the more complicated genes are, the more difficult they are. This was actually a lesser Russo that was actually bred to a banana enchi pin. So what we have here is a banana, it's an enchi, it's a woma pin, and it's a het Russo. Really wild animal. So I think I now have everything marked down here. Lori's gonna be so happy because she's been asking me to do it for so long. Now she just has to upload, like I said, at least 100, maybe even 150 ball pythons, including pies, bananas, whole bunch of different stuff, blue-eyed leucistics, all gonna be going up here within the next week, week and a half or so. So uh, uh, I know you guys will be happy as well that there's a bunch of new stuff going up on the site. Just put Raul back in, uh, definitely a no-go today. I mean, the female was just hiding. She seems stressed out. So uh, we'll try again in a couple days. We actually have a bunch of packages to open, but we're just gonna open a few of them today. Maybe we'll open a couple uh, every few days or something like that, because you guys always spoil us and we really appreciate you guys' support with everything in these crazy times. So the first thing we have, oh. oh my God. Oh, this is actually for this Beth. This is just what we need. Beth, the look at closed. From your candy dish. <laughs> oh, yeah. they're big. These awesome. are the big Old bars, size. thank you. Oh my god. They're not gonna fit in her what? dish. What? Well, they should just maybe go in my office then. Nice. Thank you, I don't know who sent this, but whoever, well, there's no note in here. Oh but thank my you for gosh. Candy. Who the hell did this? Like, oh thank my you, gosh. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. I, oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? This is Skittles. Oh, white chocolate. Oh my, I don't know if this no, is a... I'm gonna no need knows. a bigger candy. Uh, so I'm not sure if this is from the same person or not. Because unfortunately there's no note in here. Oh but, uh, my God. But yeah, well, we got lots of candy. This is Dots. Nice. Well, that'll be great because then it'll take oh, our teeth out that. too. Nice. Well, yeah, you don't want to be going to the, we can't go to the dentist now. So thank you for that. Seriously, whoever sent that is amazing. Uh, yeah, you got to keep uh, nutritious. <laughs> yeah, I definitely did not order this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll keep opening stuff up and let me know if you guys like it or not. So anyways, what do we have? Uh, it looks like a bunch of shirts. So this says Brian. Do you want to read that note real quick? Hi, Brian. Hope you and the crew like these shirts I had made for you. If oh any gosh. don't fit, let me know. I'll get the correct size. I will see you on the vlog tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, Robbie Wilson. Robbie, thank you. This one is says Brian and uh, who doggy? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Who doggy? That's Let's see. Funny. It looks like you've got everything. Are they all different? Yes, everybody has their own. Let's see. Let's see, Beth. Beth. I'm gonna see what Beth says. Beth's got a shirt. Beth yeah. got a shirt. Let's see. What does yours say? Uh, my name is Beth. <laughs> I'm a, be kind to someone today. I am promise I'll see you tomorrow. Aww. Look at that, Beth. There you look go. Brian Jay. quote. Nice. Jay, Jay, what does sure. Jay say? Oh, look at the sleeves. Says, who, who doggy? That's a rip off. That's a rip off. So incredible. Oh we'll definitely be sporting them. Uh, I I'm can't thank you enough. Oh, yeah, says. what did you say? I want to see. Oh, gosh. Mine says, Brian, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 
awesome. That's awesome. Uh, I, I don't like that shirt. But <laughs> thank you guys. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll open some other stuff up maybe tomorrow. Again, guys, stay safe out there. Stay positive as you possibly can. We will be in this together. We will get through this together. I promise you that. One way or another, we will make it through it. Can you do me a favor? If you want to spend some time, you can actually listen to my podcast. It's called Checking In. Subscribe to it right over here. You can roll through a playlist of stuff if you want to burn some time as well. Subscribe to the vlog channel right over here if you don't mind. Your support means the world to me. And can you turn the notifications on for me? You guys know I'll upload every single day. Be safe out there. Be kind to people. I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.